welcome back to Auto Social UK. If you like new car reviews, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This is the Hyundai i10 N-Line. Since 2007, when the i10 was first launched, it's finally got a turbo. Based on the brand's performance models, the N-Line gets some extra power and some additional styling. Its closest competitor would be the Volkswagen brand's Up GTI. And coincidentally, if you followed me for a while, you'll know that I owned an Up GTI for around four months. So in today's video, I'm going to be putting them against each other and see how I get on. At least, that was how I was going to start this video. But then I drove the Hyundai i10 N-Line for a couple of days and it just can't be compared to the Up GTI. It's got a little bit of extra power and some really nice performance styling, but under the bonnet, it's not a performance car. It would be much kinder to compare this car to the high up 90 brake horsepower that Volkswagen used to do. Now, don't get me wrong, the Hyundai does pull ahead in many areas, which I'll go into in the video, but I'm not gonna be comparing it directly to the Up GTI like I thought I would be. Let's get into it. Inspired by the design of Hyundai's i30N hot hatch, the i10 N-Line wears a redesigned bumpers, a bespoke front grille, exclusive 16-inch alloy wheels, and angular LED daytime running lights. It also features a rear skid plate and diffuser, along with a bespoke colour option including a two-tone finish for £500 extra. I'm a big fan of Hyundai styling and I think the little i10 N-Line looks absolutely amazing. The only difference maybe for me is I'd have it in that iconic icy blue colour that they put on the end cars. The only thing I don't like about the styling is the red decals. So we've got little bits of red down here and along the front bumper. I just think they cheapen it a little bit. It looks like a 17 year old has gone into Halfords and brought some stickers to make his car look a little meaner. But overall, it's an amazing looking car. You can't deny that. With the rise of the crossovers and the SUVs, the super mini segment is becoming few and far between, with many brands ditching their smallest models. But the i10 continues to be a firm seller for Hyundai and doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Hyundai have extended the wheelbase by 40 millimeters on this generation of i10. But actually overall, it's only five millimeters longer than it was previously. And that's because they've reduced some of the overhang. That extra length means rear passengers benefit from extra legroom. Four adult occupants will be able to get comfortable in the i10 while there's the bonus of being able to fit another passenger in the middle of the rear bench if needed, which isn't offered on other rivals. The 252 litre boot space is also one of the best in its class, but the impractical parcel shelf lets things down slightly. So, moving on to the interior of the Hyundai i10 N-Line, and inside it's pretty unoffensive it's not particularly exciting but it isn't dull either it's somewhere in the middle which is going to be a good thing for a lot of customers because it does open up the market because this is the end line you've got a leather wrap steering wheel with red stitching and the end detailing and i must admit this is a really nice soft feeling steering wheel you've also got some checkered parts on your dials on the on the dash You've got some red that goes around the air vents. You've got this quite nice honeycomb dash. It is slightly plasticky, but overall it looks good. The only thing I think that really lets this car down is these seats. I do think they do feel quite low quality, whereas the rest of the car feels quite high quality. If they were part leather, they'd be much nicer. Maybe some more bucketing so you feel like you're kind of being hugged by the seats. But overall, it is a really nice place to be in here. Late night drives in the i10 can be a little dark. It would have been nice to have some ambient lightings under the dash or on the door cards. Now I'm quite an irritable person, but let me show you something. When you first turn on the Hyundai, five bleeps, which is what they call their system warm up or system checks or something. Why does it need to bleep that many times? And as soon as I get in, that gets my back up. Now, please, someone in the comments, if you've got one of these cars, if you've got an i10, let me know if there's any way you can stop it from doing that. Or maybe it is telling me that there's something wrong with the car. But 
If that's standard, I find that just a little bit annoying. Moving on to technology, and this is really where the Hyundai pulls in front of the likes of the Volkswagen up. Even on the higher spec Volkswagens, you do have to use your phone as a screen, whereas the Hyundai gets the same colour touchscreen that you'll find in the larger models. I've got all the standard stuff like DAB radio and Bluetooth. I've also got Apple and Android CarPlay, which is pretty handy because I don't have a fitted sat-nav. So you do have to use your phone as the sat-nav, which isn't really a problem nowadays. I've got cruise control and I've also got a rear view camera, which is really handy on a car this size. I've got automatic lights and automatic high beam assist, but not automatic um, rain sensing wipers, which is a little bit of a weird combination. But otherwise, that is a very small complaint on a car, which is otherwise very well specced. During my time in sales, I saw all sorts of people come in to buy super minis, but they do remain very popular for new drivers. And that's where the Hyundai is a great option because it comes with loads of standard safety equipment. I've got active lane assist, front collision warning. I've also got hill hold start as well as lots of other options. All of these things are gonna to help to put your parents' minds at rest. And they also help reduce your insurance. All of that safety technology is a great bonus in my eyes. The only thing I find slightly irritating is you have to turn off the lane assist every time you get in the car. I will use lane assist on a long journey, but when you live in the countryside like I do, and you're constantly weaving across the roads, it does get slightly annoying that the steering is always battling you. Just like that. <laughs> What is nice is Hyundai haven't just stuck a new engine and a body kit on this car. They have actually made some small chassis tweaks as well. Spring rates have been increased and new shock absorbers with enhanced compression control have been added. The result is that the car rides and handles with impressive composure for the size. It is a little on the firm side, but the chassis soaks up the bumps well and it gives it a maturity on the roads. Putting other car brands to the side, the new turbo engine that comes with the N-Line i10 is a great addition to the lineup. Previously, the only engines available were a 1 litre and a 1.2 litre naturally aspirated. Now, even though the i10 is a really quite small car, those engines really did struggle with some power. The new engine is a 1 litre, 3 cylinder turbocharged petrol, producing 100 brake horsepower and 172 newton metres of torque. Now, that does bring some extra power to the i10, but still, 0 to 62 is still going to take you 10.5 seconds. So it's not exactly quick, but that doesn't tell you the full story, as from standstill, the engine gives the little i10 a much improved performance, thanks to its extra torque available lower down the rev range. Power does start to tail off around 50 miles per hour, but that shove from the turbo really does help if you're keeping up with traffic or if you want to take over on the motorway. And that's exactly why I don't want to compare the N-Line to the UP GTI. The UP GTI has around 16 more brake horsepower and a handful more torque, but it just feels constantly ready to go. The UP GTI is based off of the old Golf GTI and you can feel it when you drive it. It's bred to be a performance car. I don't think this is bred to be a performance car. This is bred to be a quicker version of the standard model with some nice trim and a nice look but it's not a performance car. Now I know a lot of people will be saying, oh yeah, but the up's not quick enough to be a performance car. It's not, but it just has that feel about it. Whereas this is a very nice car, very comfortable and vastly quick enough for its size, but it's just missing a little bit of heritage. So does that mean I don't like the i10 N line? Absolutely not. I just don't want it compared to the up GTI. Standing on its own as a super mini, it ticks all the boxes. It's spacious, it's economical, it's got loads of technology, it's got loads of safety equipment, which really pulls it ahead in this, this kind of class, and it looks great. It's just not a performance model. But if you're not looking for a performance model, and if we forget about that, I can't fault it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more reviews like this. What do you think of the little i10 N-Line? 
Has it got enough performance or do you think Hyundai should have gone all out like the UP GTI? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.